Oh, quoi, tu Le président. Veuillez vous asseoir. Le président. Reprise de l'audience. La parole Now we would like to hand over to the prosecution to continue putting questions to Mr. Heder. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to clarify that the typewritten version of Pol Pot and Q Sampon is D366.7.1. So we have this typewritten version, and then we have the direct photocopy of the published work. Now, Mr. Heder, can, can I ask this? Monsieur the document that we've been working off, which is the typewritten version, version, was that something that you produced or was produced at the university, or do you know nothing about this typewritten version that we're working off? Uh, I, I, I don't know anything about the version off which you're, you're working. I only know the, Je ne sais the pas ragged, dark photocopy of the original is published in Australia. Sur quelle version? Je ne sais rien de la version sur laquelle vous travaillez, mais je sais que la, la vieille version the pa the is, originale is, I vient d'Australie. La pagination the retype est version has différente. The vous devez one, travailler sur une transcription. Et il y a un décalage d'un chiffre entre les deux versions. Um, I was, uh, Asking a question. Which was about, um, in the book you were saying, in an interview with the author on the 4th of August 1980, he alleged that Khmer agents who were the Vietnamese infiltrated into the Central Committee didn't reach half of its membership, but in the Standing Committee it was almost half, and you'd confirmed that that was what was written in the book. What I would like to do, please, is to take you to File 3, Tab 6. And this is now document number E3-203, which is the transcript of the questions and answers in the interview that you had with Q Sampon on the 4th of August 1980. Can you confirm that's the document you have? Entretien avec Q Sampon du 4 août 80. Est-ce le document que vous avez? Yes. Réponse, oui. I'd like you to go to page 19 of... Question. That document, English YRN 0042 4014, Khmer 0043 4233, sorry, that is the French, and Khmer 0033 5410 through 11. And you had been speaking, and Q Sampon had been answering about the Khmer, the, the Vietnamese agents, and talking about them secretly destroying and distorting the line. And that led to this question from you to Q Sampon. In 1975, what percentage of them were in the senior ranks of the party, in the Central Committee or in the Standing Committee? Answer, there were many. Question, half. Answer, less than half in the Central Committee, but nearly half in the Standing Committee. Question from you. Nearly half. Who were they? Answer, I don't want to mention about this issue here, and it's not the right time for us to discuss conclusively about our experiences, because we are busy with the war with fighting to defeat the Yuan. We will deal with this issue gradually. 
Can you confirm that that's an accurate record of what was said at this stage of your interview with Q. Saint-Pan? Yes, I mean, the, obviously the translation oui. is slightly different, une but the sense, qui I think, un petit is peu the same. Mais le sens y est. I'm moving Question. back to the document, which is, Je in fact, D366-7.1.14 for Mr. Uh, Maloney from Mr. Coppe, probably best that I refer to some footnotes. There's reference to footnote uh, 37, 39, forty. I'm going to try and uh, summarize the general theme, uh, but make specific reference to material before footnote 37. And you are talking generally about Q. Sampon and Grunk and Funk. And you state this. For your benefit, Mr. Uh, Header, page 11 of page the item. Pour vous, Monsieur Header. Formally speaking, the destruction Formellement, of Grunk parlant, and Funk proceeded Grunk in three steps. First came the adoption of a new constitution to replace the Funk political program dating program to 1970. Second came the holding Ensuite, of what purported to be elections to a national assembly to replace the Funk-sponsored congresses over which Q. Sampon had been presiding as the supposed popular policy-making body of the revolutionary movement. Third came the establishment of a new government and other state bodies to replace Grunk itself. I want to deal in the next part with elections. And can I ask you please to turn within the same file to classeur, tab 2. This is document number E3-390. Bar it is the transcript of your interview with Matt Lee. De votre interview avec We've Matt already Lee. referred to it in court this morning. On en a déjà parlé ce matin. Can I please take us to... It's page 28 page of 28. the document. The English ERN is 00436873. I don't have the Khmer, but I'm going Je to ask my Khmer, colleague to see if she can help with pulling this up. Consoeur, si well, can I just check for one moment? Mr. Header and for everyone, it's available in Khmer and it will come up on the screens in Khmer. For our purposes, Mr. Header, page 28, about a third of the way down the page after figures 250, 100, 50, there is a sentence that begins, but the method of my election. Do you have that, please? Yes. So this is Matt Lee speaking. But the method of my election, let me tell you, each center had only one ballot. For instance, me, Matt Lee. So they called in the people to vote, saying that if they were dissatisfied, to erase it. Let me tell you, no one aside from the cadres had a big ballpoint pen in their pocket in that era. No one. Ask the brothers that were evacuated from Phnom Penh. President. Uh, Mr. Co-Prosecutor, could you please hold on? We appear to have some technical problem in the presenting his excuse. Son micro n'était pas allumé.
The President, Mr. Prosecutor, you may uh, repeat your last uh, question uh, to the witness because just now it was not uh, rendered into French. Uh, you may now repeat. Mr. Hedder, the portion we're reading begins with the words, but the method of my election. Do you have that on your page? The method of my election. Yes. But the method of my election, let me tell you, each centre had only one ballot. For instance, me, Matt Lee. So they called in the people to vote, saying that if they were dissatisfied to erase it. Let me tell you, no one aside from the cadres had a big ballpoint pen in their pocket in that era. No one. Ask the brothers that were evacuated from Phnom Penh. If they had one, they hid it because they were afraid it would be known that they were literate. All near-sighted people took off their eyeglasses. They were afraid of being called intellectuals and being taken away and killed. They said that intellectuals still had imperialists' influence. In particular, in that election, if any of the people dared to strike out the name, they were standing and watching. And since there were no photographs on the ballot, and it just said Matt Lee, they brought a stool for me to sit on, and they had the people vote. They just looked at my face, put in their ballot, and turned around. No one dared strike out my name. Can you confirm that that was what you were told by Matt Lee in this interview? Yes. We're moving now to the Assembly, and Matt Lee continues. So after the election on the 11th of May, they called me to the meeting and we left from the district. I was in the meeting on the 12th. On the 13th, I returned home. They instructed that the assembly belonged to the party and the work had to be given to the party to do. But our assembly required by law and custom so that the international world would know that we had laws and customs and a proper assembly like they did. That's what they told me. But the content of the meeting, I'm not talking about organizing the ministers or the council of ministers or council of state. I'm talking about the organization of the assembly. The assembly was 250 persons. They had a standing committee of 10. Among those 10 was the chairman, Nguyen Chia. There were two deputy chairmen, and other than that, they were all members. I was a member of the standing committee of the assembly. I was member number eight. So what did we discuss in that meeting? Nothing. They just read it out and we raised our hands. For example, they read out the organization of the standing committee. One, two, who was the chairman, who the deputies were, and we clapped our hands. And the Constitution, a moment, that Constitution, just a moment. They wrote that Constitution very well. For example, they wrote that the people had the right to have or not have religious faiths, but reactionary religions were absolutely forbidden. That's what they wrote. But in fact, in that meeting of the assembly, they eliminated all religion. 
He then says a little bit further down, their mandarins, the council of ministers, had Pol Pot as prime minister, and others were in there. Hu Nim was minister of propaganda and culture, and they had a court. They assigned Q Son Pong as chairman of the state presidium, and Sao Pim, my leader, was first deputy chairman. Nim Ross was in what they called the West. Is that right? You then said, question, the Northwest, reply, Northwest. He was second deputy chairman, uh, and they killed both. That's why I saw no one was present. It was like when we voted, we just raised our hands in acceptance. So then, the assembly meeting lasts just two hours. Mr. Inaudible, Inaudible, national leadership level, brother Chia Sim, it began at 7.30 and ended at 9.30. So I wore a suit with them for two hours, a, a suit and a necktie, and we left. They had us take off the suits and neckties at the foreign ministry, give them back, and put on black clothes to go back home. But who did they disseminate it? On the 11th, there was not yet any meeting. The meeting was on the morning of the 12th. On the 13th, we went back home. At dawn on the 14th, they announced on the radio that the assembly had for three days busily discussed in detail the laws and customs and had organized the ministers. Is that an accurate recording of what Matt Lee told you in this interview? Yes. Mr. Hedder, in terms of direct factual information from direct factual sources, have you obtained any other factual information about the conduct of these elections? You used the word purported in the report, but can you offer any other factual information as to the spread of the elections, where they were held, how frequently? Can you assist? Well, on this point, Réponse. my recollection, not a lot. It's not something I ask about very much. Um, page 12 of your and my document, the material leading to footnote 41 from a learned friend, Mr. Coppe. Avant la note 41, à l'intention de Maître Coppe. English ERN 00087. 776 Kamaya 00711385 French 00722075 Ten days after the balloting there was a central committee document outlining the party's leadership decisions about a number of important issues. These included policy on executions and vis-à-vis -vis the destruction of Grunk and Funk. And there you refer a document that we're all familiar with, a decision of the central committee dated the 30th of March 1976. Footnote 41 uh, states that this document, the one you were referring to, I think, this document has been translated in extenso by Ben Kiernan and appears in the collection Pol Pot Plans for the Future. You then add at the end, in some places, my translation of the passages quoted here are slightly different from his. The original Khmer text was kindly provided to me by David Chandler. Can I ask, just in terms of the translations of this document, were there any material differences on the question of 
the policy on executions and vis-à-vis -vis the destruction of Grunk and Fung. I think um, there are some. There is a problem which often arises in the translation of Khmer due to the Khmer frequent lack of clear specification of the difference between singular and plural. So sometimes it's not clear whether en Khmer, parfois, on ne sait pas exactement we're talking about an office or about offices. Ou de au um, there's also sometimes a problem parfois in the, aussi, the way in which the modifiers follow nouns. Quant à la manière so you dont can't tell whether if, le nom, if, if standing le follows le two mentions of committee, si whether it means Standing committees Suis in both of the two cases, deux fois la mention d'un comité, on ne sait pas si dans les deux cas, c'est le comité permanent ou seulement le comité permanent dans l'un des deux cas. Et ça, quand ça peut context. être su, ça peut l'être par le contexte of the rest of the et grâce à ce qu'on sait Sometimes de la situation. No Parfois, il n'y a pas de solution, il faut simplement supposer. Now, if we can stay on the same page, because you do then explain the document, certainly in terms of um, I hope your your Kamaya, and I quote: uh, "The document began by clarifying policy with regard to the right to decide on extermination within and outside the ranks of the party. It declared that there should be parameters within which the work of implementing our revolutionary dictatorship, in other words, execution, is carried out." It then delineated which party or other body had the authority to order an execution in various contexts. For example, it pronounced that for those appended to the offices of the centre, i.e. the central committee, the centre office committee is to make the decision. It seems that those appended to the offices of the centre, in at least some instances, covered Communist Party cadre who worked in government ministries, including those who were ministers, but not themselves of central committee rank. Is that now a fair summary, adopting your Kamaya, from reading the Est-ce que c'est un résumé fidèle par rapport à votre version Khmer? Uh, yes, but that very problem that I flagged oui. arises in Et this le, context. Le so, ici. Um, in, in, in the where it, where, where it says it pronounced that Là. quote for those appended to the offices of Il the center. It might be singular office, and the center office committee is to make the decision. Conversely, that, one could, that could be the center office committee. So it's ambiguous or unclear, I think, on the face of it, with, with the, in the absence of context or other clarifying information, whether Et sans information complémentaire, on ne peut pas savoir si c'est un singulier ou un premier. At the bottom of our page Question. 12, la page 12, which follows on from footnote 43, la note de page 43 you make reference to Suvasi, and then turning over our page onto page Ensuite, 13, on page which becomes English 008777, Khmer 007-11386, and French 007-22076, still on doing, you say, you say Communist Party pseudonym was Duan. Duan was like Q Sampon, an intellectual, but not a well-known one, nor one who had a record of working at a higher level with the intellectual and political elite of the Sihanouk era. His post as chairman of office 
870 was already a powerful one because its previously defined duty was, quote, to keep track of the implementation, close quote, of the Standing Committee's policy decisions. And that references back to the 9th of October 1975 meeting, which is our E3-182. And so when you're talking about um, the previously defined duty. Do I have it right? You're talking to what was previously defined in the minutes of an earlier meeting. You wanted to say that these functions were already announced in the PV of a previous meeting? Yes, that's correct. Yes. In terms of factual information from factual sources, not opinion, not speculation, other than S21 confessions, have you seen factual documents that provide information on the workings of Office 870? I think the answer is yes, but I, if I was going to deal with it, I would really like to look at the individual documents again. And there, I think there are other mentions of it, uh, but because this is such a contentious and crucial issue, and because there's so much ambiguity surrounding the terminology, um, I don't, even on, on factual grounds, Même without the documents in front of me, I'm a little si bit reluctant les to, les to yeux, comment. Okay, thank you. Um, Merci. Page 14 page for us, 14. which will be following on shortly after footnote 49, Peu après la note 49. English ERN 00087778. 000 Khmer. 00711389 and French 00722077. The bottom of our page 14. As of October 1975, when Q Sampon was still its deputy premier, the Grunk cabinet comprised 20 cabinet level figures. Of these, nine were fellow intellectuals or elite political figures with whom he had worked in pre-revolutionary Phnom Penh, but were either not members of the Communist Party, held significantly lower ranks in it than him, or had no obvious direct connection to party leaders in the standing committee. You then discuss other figures, and about a third of the way down the page, you state in effect that uh, out of his, that's Q Sampon's 16 former Grunk and Funk colleagues had eventually become executed in, in terms nine out of 16. Uh, is that correct? Yes, exact. From, I think the answer is yes. I mean, I'm trying to read through and do the, the counting, but yes. We end up with a nine at footnote 50 being all set out. Can you confirm that the nine are set out at footnote 50? Confirmez-vous que à la note 50, vous donnez les noms de ces neuf personnes? Yes, the nine names are enumerated. And Specified in that footnote oui, number I'd like to move 50. quite some pages now to page 19 of ours. This is text in relation to footnote 66. The English ERN 000 
Khmer 0071-11397 and French 0072201. Talk about um, Democratic Kampuchea's official broadcast, radio broadcast, a Pol Pot speech, which publicly revealed for the first time both the existence of the Communist Party and his leadership of it. The speech, given on the 27th of September 1977, contained a detailed exposition of Pol Pot's views on the entire history of the communist movement uh, in Cambodia and its successes and failures. It seemed to signal publicly the special trust Pol Pot had in the two men who had been helping him in the purge process begun earlier in the year, Nguyen Chia and Q Sampong. They were the only two party leaders who Pol Pot found the opportunity to mention favorably. Uh, Pol Pot described Q Sampong as a distinguished intellectual and paid him the accolade of mentioning how he had suffered arrest and detention because of his political activities. And again, that's a document we're aware of, E3-144. My question is, in terms of factual sources of factual information, are there any other instances factually of Pol Pot identifying others for particular and similar praise? en leur accordant le même not, not genre de courage. No. Réponse pas à mes souvenirs, non. I want to move on, please, to page 25 in our paper. This references footnote 74 for my learned friend Mr. Coppe, the English ERN 0008 The Khmer is 007 and French 007 I ask the question, lest there are any pending objections, on the basis that this is a question going to Q Sampon's capacity for leadership, a theme which is on a Judge Laverne asked questions a few weeks ago and upon which I asked supplemental questions arising from his questions in terms of Q Sampon's position post 1979. At the bottom of our page, 25, you state, or it's stated in the book, in December 1979, 11 months after the power of the Communist Party of Kampuchea disintegrated in the face of a Vietnamese military offensive, the government of democratic Kampuchea was reshuffled. Pol Pot stepped down and was replaced as Prime Minister by Q Song Pong. Footnote 74 references Democratic Kampuchea, biographies of the members of the government of Democratic Kampuchea. And in brackets it then says typescript document in the author's possession. So your possession. Can you please explain how you came to be in possession of this typescript document? Um, yes, it was passed on to me by one or more journalists to whom it was given by, by the Khmer Rouge, for lack of a, a more specific term. Um, so this, it's a document in English that they distributed to journalists at that time, and then journalists passed on to me. Yeah, I suspect it was somebody by the name of Jim Durand. I can't be absolutely sure of that. It might have been somebody else. 
Thank you. Our page, the next page, which is 26, referencing footnote 77, English ERN 000 87790, Khmer 0071140, French 0072088. In addition to assuming the post of Prime Minister, Q. Sampon also became the provisional chairman of the patriotic and democratic front of the great national union of Kampuchea. Again, you reference from democratic Kampuchea. This document is called composition of the government of democratic Kampuchea. And again, typescript document in the possession of the author is the chain of translation of the document similar to the document we've just dealt with in the previous footnote. Uh, yes, again, I think the original is in, is in English and the document came to me via journalists who received it directly from, from, from them. I'd like to move again on a number of pages to page 28 on our version. If it helps um, in terms of footnotes, it is text in relation to material between footnotes 83, 84 and onwards, but you're talking about your 1980 interview with Q. Sampon. And to <coughs> introduce the analysis, you say a <coughs> third of the way down page 28 on our version. It's perhaps useful to quote at length from remarks he, that's Q. Sampon, made to the author in August 1980 and from a document issued under his authority in July 1987. And I'm, going, I'm not going to deal with comments about starvation. I want to start with comments about another matter. So halfway down the page, there's a sentence starting with regard to executions. And the sentence reads, with regard to executions, he, that's Q. Sampon, similarly asserted that the concrete reality is there were no such killings as a result of a systematic policy or line to kill, per se. Talk like this is untrue in concrete terms. He then, though, as you say a little later on, about four sentences afterwards, thus after asking himself rhetorically and euphemistically whether there had been things that adversely affected the lives of the people, he replied, there were indeed, although not on the scale of a massacre. He quickly added that the existence of such killings should be clarified. They existed as a result of the Vietnamese agents, Khmer agents, who the Vietnamese infiltrated into the ranks of our state power, where they furthermore had quite important roles. Evidently, uh, you, you say referring to Sao Pim, Rus Nim, and Chuchet, as people, some of them were in charge of the zones. You then state this, quoting from the interview, but by 1977 to 1978, we had basically sorted them out and put proper order into the situation inside the country. Now, does that reflect both what's written on this page of the book and also what Q. Sampon told you in the interview that you had with him. I'm having a little bit of trouble sorting out what, which may have, what might have come from which of those two sources. Um, so the footnote is where? 
I think it might be easier if I take you to the actual interview. So, um, tab 6, under your existing file, page 18. I'm now in the actual interview, which is E3-203. This is English 0042-4013. French 0043-4232. Zero zero three eight five four zero nine through ten. Now that is the transcription of the actual interview. I hope it helps if you look on the bottom of page eighteen about some of them are in charge of major zones and they distorted our line. And then if I can read from this, and if you can confirm this is actually what Q. Sampon said in the interview, and perhaps to start with that sentence, some of them were in charge of major zones and they distorted our line, making some people in the areas they were in charge of unhappy and affecting the lives of innocent people. What did they do all these things for? They did these to isolate our democratic Kampuchean government from the people. Then it would be easy for them to stage a coup. This was an attack on us from the inside out. It was an attempt to attack us from the inside out. Nonetheless, we fought constantly against these attempts and defeated them. <coughs> Until 1977, 1978, we managed to deal with these people completely and brought order back to the country. Thus, the people were very satisfied. This is the truth. Now, can I deal with it this way? <coughs> is that an actual, ac accurate recording of what Q. Sampon told you in the interview? The President. The President, uh, Mr. Witness, could you please hold Monsieur on and cancel the um, Could my learned friend finish the whole answer when reading Je vais à mon this page 18? De also, the last sentence. De la réponse, y la well, um, it's le there. My learned friend can cross examine upon it. Bien, Mr. Heather, can you confirm Monsieur that that was what Q. Sampon told you in the interview? Vous a bien dit cela à the President, uh, Mr. Le Witness, could you please respond? Monsieur le témoin, veuillez répondre. Yes, I, I, I confirm the, the, the basic content. The, the content of, of, of the, the document that you most referred to just now. Uh, I think the, the, the passages in my publication are taken from this same interview, and the differences are explained by the vagaries of translation, different sensibilities about how things should be translated, but the substance is, is, is if not identical, then virtually identical. Uh, now, this interview with Q. Sampon, <coughs> um, the 4th of August 1980, again, similar question to yesterday with Ing Sari. Um, how was this interview set up? How did you get access to Q. Sampon? Who was present at the interview? A little bit of background. And I apologize because I've gone against my golden rule of asking three questions in one. But do you get the drift je, of the question? Vous posez trois questions en une, ce que en général je ne fais pas, mais avez-vous bien saisi ma question? Um, this interview happened while I was Réponse. at the Institute, uh, the Asian Institute of Tuolumne Cornell University in Bangkok. Um, the 
interview, the setting up of the interview was facilitated L'organisation de by cette interview uh, the, the Thai a été Academic, par who was then, I think, the head of the institute, Kian Tirawit, and also with the help of um, journalist former colleagues of mine, uh, including the folks from Kyoto, with whom I did the interviews that are in one of the other documents that we uh, discussed Avec extensively. Sur les uh, I went dans un autre in, in the company of Je another, uh, a number of journalists. I've been trying to, I knew this question was coming, I've been trying Je to remember uh, who those journalists were. I think one of them was probably Gary Burns. Um, it was a television journalist. There were a couple of others. At the moment, for the life of me, I can't remember exactly who. Um, we were picked up in Bangkok by a Democratic Campuchia vehicle and taken to the Thai Cambodian border um, and probably crossed in over to the Cambodian side. As it happens, this is the border between Cambodia and Thailand in the area of Pravakia, which we know is somewhat disputed. So I'm not exactly sure which side of the border I was on. Uh, the format of the encounter was initially a kind of press conference. Uh, Kyosun Pan, if I recall correctly, made a prepared statement to myself and the, the journalists present. Um, and then there was, a I had a separate interview with Kirsten Pan, which to my séparé recollection avec was one-on-one. -on -one. Journalists souvenir, were not present, it was me and Kirsten Pan and a tape recorder. Pas simplement um, moi, Pan et un enregistreur. We also spent the night Nous in this location, myself and the journalists. La nuit sur place, moi et les journalists. Um, and then, if I recall correctly, we left ensuite, the next morning si je me and were transported bien, back to Bangkok matin, in a Democratic Campuchia vehicle. Uh, just what was the location? Are we in Question. the middle of uh, a town? Are we on the à outskirts? Are we in, 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 in the, the, the jungle? Are we, where are we? And what was the setup? What I mean by that was what was the... I don't know who was with Q Sampon. Was there an entourage? Can you just describe the setting? Uh, yes, this was at the top or near the top of the Dong Rak escarpment, which forms the border, the disputed border between Cambodia and Thailand in that area. Um, Kyosun Pan was present, uh, somebody by the name of Duan Mum uh, was present, also present on that occasion was Son Sen, uh, to whom I also spoke not in a formal interview, but informally, um, and this was considered from the Democratic Campuchia side of things a bit of a treat because Son Sen had, according to what we were told and according to what Son Sen said to me, uh, just emerged from the interior of Cambodia. Uh, um, Sonsen venait to juste de sortir de l'intérieur du Cambodge où il dirigeait l'opposition à la présence um, vietnamienne. So this was the first time anyone had seen Sonsen, I think, any foreigner, that is to say, any, or I should say any westerner, I suppose, uh, I suppose Thai and Chinese had seen him, uh, but any westerner or any western journalist or academic had seen Sonsen uh, since the fall of Aucun journaliste so, ou in my understanding chercheur occidentaux n'a vu Son Sen depuis uh, la chute de Phnom Penh. D'après ce que j'ai compris suite à ces entretiens, d'après ce que j'ai compris par la suite, 
Now, I'd like you just to look at the first page of our file 3, tab 6. And the front of the document has duration 47 minutes. And then it even has a counter 0, 0 to 16 minutes. And then can I take you to the final page of the, the, the document? So first of all, the front page, can you confirm it has 47 minutes, first of all? Confirmez-vous qu'il est écrit 47 minutes à la première page du document. Yes, that's what it says. Oui. And if you look at the final page. Et à la dernière page. Of E3 slash 203, we have end of tape 6. Il est écrit. Now, how was this recorded? Comment? L'avez-vous enregistré? An ordinary cassette tape recorder of the of the era. Sur un enregistreur. The kinds of cassettes that people used to play music off of in those days. Les cassettes que habituellement on utilisait pour écouter la musique. I mean, was the was the tape recorder on open show? I mean, were you hiding it? Was it was it openly on view? No, this this wasn't secretly recorded. This was openly on view. Je ne l'ai pas enregistré secrètement. L'enregistreur était visible. I'd like to go to page twenty of E three. The, the document itself, E3 slash 203. Sur ce document, E3 barre 203, la page 20. Sorry, in fact, I think it will be easier. En fait, il serait plus facile. To go to the final page, which is page 21 for you, this is English ERN 0024016, Kamaya 00385414, and French 00434236. And I'm quoting. Your question. Question to Q Sampon. What I wanted to ask was, at the time, was about anyone who was accused of being either CIA agents or UN agents. I want to ask if any of them were accused of being UN agents in order to kill them in order to kill true patriots. Did that happen among the upper echelon? Answer. Yes, there was a comrade in West. He was an old man. He was accused by the Yuan agents. They were responsible for that. They accused him. However, there were, they were not successful because we investigated the case in a timely manner. I want to pause there because on the face of it, this transcript shows end of tape six. Is that correct on this page? Yes. Now I want you to go back, please, to the same file tab one, which is the book. Pol Pot and Q Sampon. And to page number 29 in the English, referencing footnote 85 and the text beneath for the learned friend Mr. Coppe. English 0087793. French 
and Khmer 0038-5413-314. Now, if you look at the top of the page, Mr. Kiernan, uh, Mr. Heder, forgive me. Excusez-moi, Monsieur Heder. It's late in the day. Il se fait tard. If you look at the, this is you in the book, and there's a direct, I think, translation or, or a direct extrapolation from the interview. There was a comrade in the West who's elderly now, who was accused by the Vietnamese agents who were responsible, uh, responsible above him. With regard, however, to this problem, they were unable to keep, unable to make their accusations stick because we kept track of things and examined them. It's the next part, because you say here in the book, when the matter was pursued further, in other, in other words, when the comrade in the West was pursued further, so to quote, when the matter was pursued further, the following exchange occurred. Question. So what about people like Hu Yun and Hu Nim and all the others who were executed as a result of being accused of treason? Hu Yun and Hu Nim were friends of yours. And I guess you also knew many of the leading party cadre who were killed because they were accused of being CIA agents or KGB agents or Vietnamese agents? What about all those zone and sector secretaries and deputy secretaries and members and all those brigade secretaries and deputy secretaries and members? I find it very hard to believe that there were so many agents of imperialism and the Vietnamese within the party. I take it you believe they were all agents that all of those who were executed at these levels were correctly accused and should have been killed. You don't think it's possible some of them were wrongly accused, that some of them were loyal communists and patriots and wrongly killed. As far as you know, there weren't any cases where somebody innocent was accused. Answer, no. Your question, not a single one. Answer, no, none. Your question, so everybody who was executed was in fact a traitor? Answer, yes, as far as I can grasp. Question, and no one was wrongly accused? Answer, as I said, there was one old man in the West who was accused of being a traitor but was in fact loyal. Now, first question, sounds obvious, is that what's written in this paper, first of all? Yes. Now, when you were writing the paper, and referencing the interview with Q. Sampong, what record were you relying on to quote verbatim questions and answers that I've just read out? Littéralement les questions et réponses dont je viens de faire la lecture. Well, there are. I, I, I obviously see where this is going. What the problem is. Où réside le problème? From the way it's written, it would seem to me that there must have been rédigé, another tape, um, which has possibly been, been lost over the years. Perdu au fil des ans. It's also possible that this was done after the tape ran out or dur over dinner que cela um, or the next fait morning, une fois que la était uh, and therefore pleine, it wasn't on the, the tapes pendant le dîner, that were done during the formal pour interview. Cela but pas that été doesn't seem, from, from the way formelle. it's written, Mais vu la façon uh, dont it doesn't rédigé, seem to have been those are not the kinds of, that's not, the, not the kind of presentation of the data that would come from anything other than a tape. If the tape was lost, then the tape was lost. 
venir que d'une cassette. Si la cassette est perdue, eh bien, elle est perdue. Êtes-vous convaincu que ces questions et réponses rendent fidèlement les questions que vous avez posées à Q. Sampan et les réponses qu'il vous a faites Oui, je m'en souviens assez bien. Je me souviens assez bien de cette partie de la conversation. C'est un échange assez chargé d'émotions et de confrontations, et donc je m'en souviens. Question. Pouvez-vous mettre cela en contexte Six cassettes Roughly 50 minutes times six. Roughly 300 minutes. 47 minutes, environ donc 300 minutes au total. You're towards the end of the interviews. I mean, can you try and recreate for us? How did it feel when you're sat opposite Q Sampon asking these questions? How did you feel inside yourself when you were asking these questions about Hunim and Kuyuan? How did you feel? Que ressentiez-vous Réponse. Je savais que j'avais en quelque sorte pris l'homme en embuscade. Je ne pense pas qu'il était préparé à ce type de question. Because the line of questioning was fairly detailed and reflected the knowledge that I already had at this point of the structure and organization of the party, the purge process. So it was, as I said, it was. It was confrontational. It was emotional. I think on both sides. C'était quelque chose de tendu pour nous deux. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm conscious of the time. Can I explain that I have two more pages, which will constitute perhaps two or three questions, and I hope it would be convenient, please, to give me a chance to finish this today. But I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to finish this today. But I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to finish this today. But I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to finish this today. But I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to finish this today. But I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to finish this today. But I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to finish this today. But I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to finish this today. But I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to finish this today. But I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to finish this today. But I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to finish this today. But I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to finish this today. But I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to finish this today. But I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to I'm carrying on now with the book, our version D366, stroke 7.1.14, referencing around footnote 86, English ERN 000 87794, Khmer 0071114167, French. 0072091. And you state, or it's stated in the book, in response to years of questions like these, in other words, the questions we've just gone through, Q Sampon's office of the Vice President of Democratic Kampuchea for Foreign Affairs issued a document. Now it says here on the 15th of July 1978. Can I first ask you, is that a correct reference to the date of truth and justice as it's called in its short form? Or should it in fact be 1987? Truth and justice. It should be 1987, as it is in the book. Number 86. Thank you. I'm not going to deal with it in detail, but you you state a bit later on, two or three sentences. The document conceded more deaths than Q. Sampan had been willing to admit in 1980. These included deaths by starvation and executions of alleged traitors and of people who had been mistakenly killed when they were in fact not agents of the Vietnamese. Car ce n'était pas des agents des Vietnamiens. However, the document still vastly underestimated the true death toll and attempted to shift almost all the responsibility for starvation and execution to alleged enemies. Now that document is on our case file. 
as E3 slash 703. I don't propose to go through it, but in the footnote, uh, I want to deal with, well, yes, I'll, I'll read on if I may, on the text. Q. Sampond thus in effect simply reiterated his unrepentant support for faits, and his association with Pol Pot and his failed policies. Uh, he also inadvertently shed more light on his own role in the conduct of criminal political murders. You go on to say, Q. Sampond's document begins by rehearsing the false claim that Pol Pot's policies succeeded in improving the life of the peasantry. It is asserted that once the Communist Party of Kampuchea took power, their life began to improve, for all of them had enough rice to eat and clothes. Moreover, their health was constantly improving since 1976, and the situation supposedly kept improving right through 1978. Now, in terms of that document at footnote 86, to give its uh, title, Office of the Vice President of Democratic Kampuchea in Charge of Foreign Affairs, what are the truth and justice about the accusations against Democratic Kampuchea of mass killings from 1975 to 1978? and then again, typescript document in the author's possession. So my question, Mr. Hedder, is how did this document get to be in your possession? Comment avez-vous eu possession de ce document du bureau du vice-président des affaires étrangères, intitulé « What are the truth and justice ?» etc. Réponse. My recollection is that it was given to me by a Cambodian-American by the name of Gam Sos, um, who I think by this time was a serving U.S. Um, State Department official. Il travaillait au département uh, d'État U.S. State Department official, si he was pas, an employee alors, of the U.S. Embassy in Bangkok, on the Thai Cambodian border. Just to confirm that we're talking about the same document, can you please go to your tab 7? Pour vérifier qu'il s'agit du même document, onglet 7. That's our document E3 slash 703. Can you confirm that this is the document that came into your possession? E3 bar 703. Um, um, this, I don't know whether the original document's in Khmer or English, but this is obviously si in English, so en can you just help us on that? It's the, it's the same document in the sense that le même it's the same content. En ce sens I que can't le be sure that this document, which has Yuk Chang's notation on it, le document is the one that was given to me, and then Chang, I gave it to him, and then he uh, annotated it. Si uh, but it's the same, same document in, in si the sense of the same content. Um, and the original document was in English. Original était en uh, this is not somebody's somebody else's translation from the Khmer. This is their own leur translation, traduction, presumably, into supposément. English of something they wrote in Vers themselves in Khmer. De quelque chose qu'ils avaient écrit même Thank you, Mr. Hedder. Thank you, Mr. President, and your honours for allowing me a little additional time at this stage. Merci pour ce, cette prolongation. Thank you, Mr. Hedder. Merci, Monsieur Hedder. The President, Le President, thank you, Mr. Co-Prosecutor, and thank you Merci also, Mr. Hatter. The hearing for today now comes to an end, and the Chamber will adjourn now. The next hearing will be resumed on Monday next Prochaine week, audience, starting prochain. from 9 a.m. On du Monday, matin. the Chamber continues to Ce hear the testimony of Mr. Hatter. We hope Hader. this message is informed now to Ce the parties, to the proceedings and people concerned and the public. Mr. Hedder, your testimony is not yet uh, complete. The Chamber wishes to also hear your testimony again on Monday next week. So please 
returned to the courtroom on Monday, ce the 15th of July at 9 a.m. Court officer is now directed to assist uh, Mr. Heather to ensure that uh, he is returned to his place and have him returned to the courtroom at 9 a.m. on Monday. Lundi prochain. Security personnel are now directed to take uh, Mr. Kilson Pon and Loon Tia back uh, to the detention facility and have them return to the courtroom by 9 a.m. on Monday, the 15th of July, 9 a.m. à 9 du matin. Mr. Nuntier is directed only to be returned to his holding cell downstairs where he can observe the proceedings uh, through audiovisual link. The court is adjourned. From Jane Groucher.